Welcome back. We're now going to uh, move on to the male reproductive organs. So let's start on the outside, uh, like we did with the female reproductive. So in the female, there was the labia minora and majora. In the male, we've got the foreskin called the prepus. This is what is typically cut away during uh, a circumcision, is the prepus. This is the glans penis. Here is the scrotum. The scrotum houses the testes. And notice the scrotum is away from the body. And being that the testes is away from the body, it's about three degrees cooler down here, which is very beneficial for sperm production. If it ever gets too cold, the muscles contract, pulling the testes up closer to the core of the body to create warmth. So here's the testy, which is where sperm are produced. Here is the epididymis, which is where sperm mature. And here is the vas deferens, also known as the ductus deferens, which is where sperm are stored. And it's this structure here, which is where oxytocin acts on to make the smooth muscle of the vas deferens contract for the ejaculation. Here's the uh, spermatic cord, which is the sheath that protects and wraps around the blood vessels, the nerves, and the vas deferens. It would be this whole structure here for the spermatic cord, if you could see the sheath around it. Here's the pubic bone, the urinary bladder, the prostate gland, and the seminal vesicle. I'm going to remove this so we can now see the same structures on the inside. So here's the penis, here's the corpus spongiosum, and the corpus cavernosum. That's the erectile tissue. That is what engorges with blood to give the male the erection. Here is the testes, and within the testes we have what's called seminiferous tubules, which is responsible for the production of the sperm. It is the interstitial cells of Leydig that do that, and the Sertoli cells. Uh, here's the pubic bone. Here's the urethra. We follow the urethra up, we'll notice that it goes through a very important gland called the prostate gland. So when the prostate gland enlarges, it usually becomes larger, but it grows in and can compress the urethra, and it makes urination very difficult. Also notice how close the prostate is to the colon. The colon is uh, filled with bacteria. So if bacteria happens to get into the prostate, we have a problem. It can certainly enlarge. This is probably why innately the prostate gland is very highly concentrated with zinc, which is, uh, has antimicrobial uh, components to it. So there's the prostate gland. This is the ejaculatory duct, which is continuous with the seminal vesicle. So the seminal vesicle secretes semen, which is released into the ejaculatory duct. That is designed, and it's a little bit of an alkaline solution that neutralizes the acidity of the urine that may be in the urethra that's released from the urinary bladder. So here's the urinary bladder where urine is stored, goes down the urethra through the prostate gland. Here's the bulbo-urethral gland, and the bulbo-urethral gland, that too secretes an alkaline solution. So we have the seminal vesicle, which is here, if you remember. That releases semen that's alkalinic, and you have the bulbo-urethral gland that secretes an alkalinic solution. So that neutralizes the pH of some of the acidity that may be left over from the urine as to not kill the sperm. And uh, those are the main uh, structures of the male reproductive organ. Thank you.